that puts us on the demo, which is facial recognition. So let's go ahead and create a new, whoops, where's our new? There we go, new uh, Python 3. And you could see how you can combine the motion detector with the facial recognition detector. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things we can do here. This will be um, cross open CV facial recognition, recognition, rename. There we go. And so to start with, uh, let's go ahead and import our information on here. We're going to import our CV2 as CV. Again, this is a personal preference. I go back and forth on this. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to do it this way if they update it and it's backward compatible. If it's not backward compatible, that's going to cause problems. Uh, but that's going to be fine. We have a lot of files going on with this. So as we start messing with the Karas and you want to have access to these files, um, let us know. We can send you, um, you know, compress them down and send them. Just put a note into the, um, send a note over to the Simply Learn team and they can help you with that. So the first thing we're going to start with is the beginning. We have face detection. Um, we've got a picture of a lady, a group of five people image. Uh, we have a grayscale, grayscale of the people. Um, let's go ahead and run. We're going to move this off to the side again like we've been doing and run it. There we go. And of course it appears right behind here. Move it off to the side and give that a second to pull in. As of now we haven't done anything. As you can see we just have two blank gray screens. Now because these aren't loaded all the way, if you try to exit out of them, uh, they'll just kind of lock the system up with it when you're connected with the Jupyter Notebooks. So we want to go ahead and just destroy all the windows. We run that and see that they are gone. And so we have our two our um, uh, gray people, gray. <laughs> Those are gray boxes. That's what the gray people are in there. And we're going to bring in the, it's called a cascade classifier. And when you look at the cascade classifier, um, it's going to load the XML har face file right there. This is real important. This is all pre-built. It's looking for edges that are common in faces. That's what this means. And when you look at the har face XML, like it's looking at the edges is what it's doing. There is all kinds of really fun stuff they have. Let me just bring this over from the GitHub. This is the OpenCV data har cascades um, GitHub. And if you go into here, uh, you can see we have eyes, uh, let's see, what is this, eye tree with eyeglasses, frontal cat face, I guess a lot of people like to identify their cat in photos, uh, frontal face, frontal face, so there's a lot of different full body, left eye, right eye, um, there's a Russian numbers, you can also create your own, so there's a lot of stuff you can do with an H, uh, with a HAR cascade file. We're going to load that up specific to detecting faces in here, so that's what this part is about. Let's go ahead and apply that. Uh, and so you can see we create a faces rectangle, uh, har cascade detect multi-scale. We're gonna put our gray into there, the, what, we, what we loaded the picture in there. And then it has some uh, scale factor, many neighbors. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. A lot of times these are very, pretty much the default. Um, default works pretty good on a lot of this stuff. And then if you wanna dig in deeper into why one would work more, why you need more information, um, you can go back into the open CV, but it's good to know about the, the HAR cascade detect multi-scale. And then when we're processing these, the first thing we want to know is we want to print um, how many number of faces found. You want to make sure we're not looking at a crowd of 500 people with you know a ton of different faces on there. And just because, let me go ahead and put this back up here, just because uh, we like to see, we like to have a view of it, we're going to go ahead and create, um, uh, uh, square it off so it, so it has just the face in there, create the face rectangle, and then we're going to go ahead and show those images. Um, I'm like, if you're like me, I like to see what I'm looking at. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. 
And we run this. Let me go ahead and put this back into half screen. Uh, the first thing we do is you notice that number of faces found is one. Uh, that's really what we're looking for is we want to make sure there's just a single face on here. And you can see here, uh, there's our group of five people that says it's actually just one person it found in there. Um, again, you can see it has a nice image of the person coming up in the different scales and colors. And this is the one we really want to look at, as you can see right here, as it puts a rectangle right around the face. This is really nice because now if you are processing this, you're processing the face or maybe you're processing the background. It could be used for either one to pull the background out from the face and blur it or take the face and center it. So there's a lot of different things you can do here. If you know this is a face and then you remember from previous we did edging, you can now draw an edge and find that edging around her head knowing that the center of the face where her nose is and then you can blur the background. You'll see that in a lot of uh, newer Zoom and uh, WebEx kind of things where they blur the background out so people can't see what's behind you when you're on one of those meetings. Now we're going to go ahead and clear this. Uh, again, this thing is set up in Jupyter. Um, there's ways to get around this, but for the most part it's just good to clean up after yourself because we're um, extending it out there. So we'll go ahead and destroy all the windows. The next two steps, or our final two steps, are to go ahead and create a model and train it. So we want to train our model and then actually apply it, um, use it for something. And we're going to go in here, let me just pull this up. And what we got here is we have um, our people. We're going to look at pictures of Ben Affleck, Elton John, Jerry Seinfeld, Madonna, uh, Mindy Kaling. These are really easy to pull up images because these are you know, famous actors. Um, I don't recognize any of them. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I actually know all of them. Um, and we've got it in here. We've got it set up uh, in one of the files. And we're just going to print the directory. So you can take a quick look at that and see what we're looking at here. Um, this is a, where it goes to. Let me go ahead and pull that up so you can see what the actual files look like. And you can see here is um, coming, drilling down into it. Let me just go under Ben Affleck, and you can see it's all these pictures. So this is what we're looking at is different headshots of Ben Affleck on here. One of the things to notice is that at some point we probably need to resize because some of these photos are a little bit wider, a little bit taller, and that squishes things and expands them. Uh, so a lot of these detections, when we're starting looking at faces, is actually doing its best to um, do the same thing, compress and expand them into, um, and train it on that, those different shapes. And we'll go ahead and load our um, HAAR -A -A cascade back in here with our face XML that we had before. Um, being that we're in Jupyter Notebooks, it's probably still listed in there. We want to go ahead and um, create an empty array of features and an empty array of labels. And we'll show you what that does here in just a minute. This is for tracking um, our different features in here. So let's go ahead and uh, we have our features and our labels. Let's go ahead and create the data. This is what we're doing here. Uh, so we have our person and people. Here's our, all our people. It's going to go through each one. We have our path, which is our directory. Always good to double check those. Make sure you go in the right direction. Uh, we can actually print the path out so that as we go, we know we're looking at the full path. Kind of a troubleshooting thing. Um, usually at this point, I've already deleted a lot of these things out of here. And you can see that uh, the guys in the back were, when they were doing it, they forget where they put the files or where they're going. They get some kind of weird error. And then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, moved, the, I moved the program over one or something like that. And so we need to go ahead and create a label, um, people.indexPerson. So we're creating a, um, a label for our training scenario. And then for each image in the OS list directory per person, we're going to look at each one of those images. Uh, then we'll take that and we'll create the um, uh, image path, image um, array. And here's our reader where we're going to read in the image. Um, here we are in OpenCV. We go ahead and put that into a grayscale uh, faces rectangle. So we look at the find the faces on there and create a rectangle around it. That's what this part is. This is all from what we did before. You already saw this programming in here. Uh, and so we are basically taking our features 
and filling it up with um, the different faces, just the face. We don't want to look at the whole body shot. Uh, if you remember from the image, one of them had him leaning against a tree. Some of them are close up, some of them are far away. So we really want to look just at the face. And then we're going to go ahead and append our label. So we have our um, features. These are each one of our images. And the label then corresponds to each one of our um, actors. So once we've done that, we have our setup on here. And this is um, uh, for training purposes. So that's what we really want to do is we want to create our trainer. Let me come back down here. Uh, create our trainer. <laughs> we want to create, we want to train our model. Uh, so here we come in down here, we have our features. Um, we're going to print that the training is done. So it's gone through and it's, it's cleaned up all the features, all the setup in here. Then we have our face recognizer. This is the heart of what's going on. The face recognizer uh, is an LBH face recognizer create. So we're creating a neural network right here. That's the model. And then we take our face recognizer and we train it with our features and our labels. So now we have those different images and we're going to train them on this model here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and just save it. Uh, save features.mpa features and save labels. We're just saving everything. That's all this is down here. And th this is interesting because there's a, so many things we can do down here. Let me just go ahead and run this. Uh, and you can see it's going through and it's opening up each of the files. Uh, and then it goes through and the training's really quick. There's not a lot of data in here. Uh, you know, there's what, a dozen pictures of each one. This isn't like going through uh, seven gigabytes of information that takes a day to process in one of these neural networks and trains them, or two or three days in the case of a project I'm working on. Uh, this is just a small amount of data. So it processes rather quickly. Some of the things you can do on here is um, to incre increase the data just with these images is you can uh, tilt them. You can take them and tilt it by 15% or 10%. Remember earlier we were looking at all those different commands. That is one of the tricks they use for training um, a setup and not knowing what angle the person's going to be at. They might only have 12 pictures and then if you tilt it 15 degrees and 30 degrees in each direction, you've now increased it by five, by a factor of five. So now you have about 60 pictures that you're um, doing for each person. So there's a lot of cool things you can do as far as, as your uh, training setup. We've now created our uh, face recognizer. It's trained, it's ready to go. So the next step is to go ahead and use it and let's see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and create our face recognizer recognition setup. Um, and we're gonna reload this. Here's our people again, same as before. Of course, you can just leave it up there since uh, with Jupyter Notebook, it automatically brings a lot of this stuff in. And then we have our features um, about pickles, true. So we're loading up our features. Here's our labels. We're going to load our labels. Remember, we saved them up here. And then we go ahead and take our face recognizer and uh, we go ahead and create that. And then we're going to just read the face trained at the, y, the, the YML file we created. So we're just loading back up what we had up here. That's all that is. This is really good to know about because this makes it very portable. Uh, this way, if you're using it in one location, obviously you can download it, um, you know, all your security cameras, track your neighbors as they uh, walk down the sidewalk next to your house. And then we're going to just read a image in. And this one we're just going to take right from the um, Ben Affleck, and we're going to do the first, um, the Ben Affleck number one image in there. That's all that is. And we'll go ahead and create our gray scale image. And we'll show that just because it's good to see whatever we're working with. Um, so this is taking our image and converting it to a gray scale. Uh, show person in gray scale. Detect the face in the image. This is nothing new. This is from before we're doing the uh, Mahar Cascade Detect Multi-Scale setup on there. And then we want to go ahead and create that rectangle around it. Uh, once we create that rectangle around it, then we want to go ahead and 
do a prediction on it. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. Um, so here's our, our faces rectangle, and so we're going to create that with our faces ROI. And then here's the key right here. Uh, here's our faces recognizer predict. It's going to return the label and the confidence on here. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and print that label with the confidence of, and it'll show the confidence. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put some text on there and print it out. It's always nice to see what's going on and then another rectangle on there. So we just are, or we're just showing the image again. So as it comes down, this is a key though, is we want to print out and find out what's the chances of this label being correct. Now, right about now, you should be guessing that it's going to get it correct. And you're going to guess it's going to have a very high confidence rating. And the reason you want to guess that is because we didn't take this image out and switch it around. Uh, in other words, this image was part of the training, and so it should have a very high confidence and have it correct because it's already in the model. And let's go ahead and see what happens. We'll go ahead and run this. And you can see the label says, hey, it's been Affleck with a 99.53%. And if we bring up the images here, whoops, let me go ahead and half screen this again so we can see what we got going here. And for whatever reason, it doesn't want to put them on top. Hold on. <laughs> I lost my images. Uh, there it is. And you can see uh, it appeared up on my far left monitor, which I, I don't know why I went there. That was kind of weird. And then there's the grayscale behind it. And you can see here we were able to identify Ben uh, Affleck with a confidence of 99.53. Thank you for joining us today with Simply Learn. For more information, please visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.